Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In this module, we'll look about, we'll look through the various uh, gateways uh, provided by the OCI Virtual Cloud Network Service. But before we get into any of the gateways discussion, uh, we need to understand the concept of route tables. Uh, you saw this earlier in the demo when we were talking and introducing uh, Virtual Cloud Network. Uh, we did create, uh, use uh, a route table in, in the VCN service when we were using the console. But let's talk about what a route table is. A route table contains rules about how IP packets can travel to different IP addresses out of the VCN. So right here you can see there is there is a route table which is attached to the subnet. Now what does the route table consist of? It consists of a set of route rules. Each rule specifies destination CIDR block and it specifies the route target, the next hop for the traffic that matches uh, that CIDR. So what exactly do we mean? So if you look at this particular subnet, it's a public subnet, it can be regional or it can be AD specific. In this case, I'm just using a regional uh, public subnet. Uh, and in the route table, there is an entry which says 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which means any IP address or all IP addresses. Uh, so this is my destination CIDR, uh, packets destined for, uh, for any IP address. They need to go to internet gateway. And this is what is being being shown here, all traffic destined for Internet Gateway. So what I do is I create an Internet Gateway. It's a managed service provided by the OCI um, Virtual Cloud Network Service. And right here you can see because of this that particular entry in my route table, my packets can actually go to the to the Internet and they can also come from the Internet. So somebody could uh, actually access if it's a web server, they could access my uh, web server running in the in the public subnet now important considerations uh, to keep in mind each subnet uses a single route table uh, so it can only be every sub each subnet can only have a single route table uh, you can specify that when you are creating the subnet or you can edit it later if you are not sure you know what kind of route table to use, you could edit that uh, later. Route table is used only if the destination IP address is not within the VCN's CIDR block. So what that means is uh, you don't require any route rules uh, in order to enable traffic within the VCN itself. So as you can see here in this uh, particular graphic, there is no rule like a local rule required here uh, for routing uh, traffic within the VCN itself. It's actually done uh, implicitly. You do really don't write, need to write a rule like that. When you add a gateway, whether it's an internet gateway, NAT gateway, different kinds of gateways, you have to update uh, the route table uh, for the subnets that uses these gateways. Otherwise, you can create a gateway, uh, but the packets will black hole. They have no way uh, to go to the gateway. Then it's again, it seems pretty logical, but that's how uh, the route table works. So having talked about, uh, you know, looked at uh, route tables uh, briefly, let's the, let's talk about the different gateways which are supported in the OCI uh, uh, VCN service. The first gateway is, is, is called Internet Gateway. And as the name specifies, uh, it's, it's a gateway which is, which takes traffic in and out uh, from a public subnet. So as you can see here, as we had seen in the previous slides, we have a public subnet here, can be regional or AD specific. Uh, and there's an instance which, which has a public IP. Now it can be a web server um, or a load balancer or something you are running your own load balancer, those use cases, but it has a public IP. And of course, uh, if it's a web server, uh, we want users to access it, or if it's a load balancer, we want users to access it. So we create this thing called Internet Gateway. It's a managed service, so you really don't need to care about the bandwidth uh, or you know HA. All those are taken care by uh, by Oracle. You you create this Internet Gateway, uh, and then uh, using that gateway, the packets can go in and out. Uh, to this to this uh, pub, uh, public uh, to this instance in the public subnet now important things to keep in mind you can only have one internet gateway for a vcn so it means that if you have different public subnets 
let's say you have a public subnet where you are hosting your bastion servers and you have one for web servers one for something else uh, all of that traffic goes through and all of them subnets are part of your single vcn uh, all of them go through uh, the, the the one internet gateway which is available for the vcn uh, as we saw in the previous slide if you after creating an internet gateway you need to add a rule in the in the vcn's route table which says that packets to 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 meaning all ip addresses every ip uh, address need to go to the internet gateway uh, and if you if you do create an internet gateway add a rule you have a web server then you can start communicating uh, to that web server so that's the first use case where you have uh, uh, let's say a web server or a, um, or a load balancer and you need to access uh, it uh, um, uh, through the internet now there's another use case where if you have an instance in a private subnet that does not allow traffic from the internet to reach it then there is no way for ip packets to reach the internet we need a mechanism for sending those packets out so for example you have a database and you need to get some patches uh, and then also route the replies correctly uh, this is you know in, in networking lingo it's called network address translation in oci we do th this through a managed service uh, called nat gateway uh, a nat gateway accepts any ip packets bound for the internet coming from the private subnets send those packets on to their destination and then sends the returning packets back to the source so let's see how it how it works so similar example uh, set up as before but now instead of a public subnet we have a private subnet here right so this can be hosting your database for example um, and the database needs to be constantly regularly uh, patched and updated right to get patches from the internet now um, because it's a private subnet as we just said uh, there is no way for packets to to go to the internet uh, and get the response back right because it's a private subnet it, you're not using an internet gateway you cannot reach internet so you have this managed service called NAT gateway which gives this whole private subnet uh, access to the internet without assigning any public ip so this is all private ip you really don't need a public ip you don't need uh, an internet gateway so what this means is host can initiate outbound connections and of course those packets will come back but not receive inbound connection so meaning if i'm an actor here i want to ping my database server I cannot do that uh, NAT gateway would block those responses and again it's a managed service so we take care of things like HA uh, things like uh, bandwidth so you really don't have to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, manage those yourself and as we have been seeing in the previous slides uh, the the rules here in the in the route table uh, you it's basically saying all the packets uh, distinct uh, uh, for uh, for uh, you know any for any IP address should go through NAT gateway. So basically, you are sending all the traffic from this private subnet to the NAT gateway, and then you, if you are doing getting patches or updates or something, they, those packets are coming back, and that all is managed uh, by the NAT gateway. Now, important thing to keep in mind: you can have more than one NAT ga NAT gateway on a VCN, though a given subnet can route traffic to only a single NAT gateway. So this is a little different than the internet gateway. The third use case is around uh, this concept called service gateway. Now, what exactly do we mean by that? Let's say you, in, like in the previous example, you have a database server which is running here in a private subnet. So this is again a DB that's running in a private subnet. But now, instead of getting the patches, what you want to do is you want to do a backup. And the best place to do a backup for, uh, let's say, a database is object storage. But now the object storage service is a public service, uh, has a public endpoint. Now, from this instance, you cannot reach uh, the object storage because you would need you would need a public IP address. So typically many workaround many customers use is they assign a public IP here and then they can access the the uh, the object storage now that's that's not a secure design right you should never have a public ip uh, assigned to a database uh, server so how do you go about doing the backup still leveraging the benefits of the object storage right so what you do is you create this managed service called service gateway 
again we take care of HA again we take care of uh, bandwidth so you don't have to worry about those and using the service gateway any traffic from the VCN that is distinct for any of the supported OCI public service uh, it uses the instance private IP address you don't need a public IP uh, so it uses the private IP address for routing the traffic goes over OCI internal network uh, fabric it never traverses the internet even though you are accessing uh, the public services uh, the, the public OCI services uh, so it's a very secure design uh, and you can still leverage all the benefits of uh, public services now how does this work uh, similar to the previous examples uh, you have a route table here now instead of giving a specific cider block here you provide a service cider label so there are two kinds of label which are available today for example if you are going to to object storage you could specify uh, object storage is a regional service so you could specify oci region object storage uh, here or you could specify all services so in this case in future if you have other services you want to access uh, you could actually do that um, because you know you have access to all the OCI services through going through your service gateway the last uh, design pattern is around use cases where you still you, you have a private subnet here it might be a database but now instead of going to the internet you are going to your own customer data centers uh, so this can be uh, for you know let's say you have your DNS running on-prem right and you want to access that through your uh, your your database running in the cloud wants to access it or you have your on-prem environments from where you want to migrate data right so you need to connect to that so for those use cases we have again a managed service called our dynamic routing gateway it's a virtual router that provides a path for private traffic between the VCN and destinations other than the internet so you're not going to internet uh, so you're not using internet gateway or NAT gateway uh, or for that matter service gateway uh, going to a public OCI service but you are going to your on-prem environments so in this case uh, you can use the dynamic routing gateway to establish a connection and there are two different um, uh, two different uh, uh, mechanisms for doing that one is through using site-to-site -site VPN uh, and the second is a dedicated private uh, connectivity called fast connect we'll cover these in subsequent modules on connectivity uh, but as the the, the uh, graphic is showing here through the DRG now your your database can communicate to your on-prem uh, environments now um, this is we have been we have been seeing this earlier uh, you create the DRG you attach it to the VCN you have to add a rule here right and the rule is very similar to what we had been discussing earlier all the traffics so all the packets destined for any any IP address has to go through through DRG for this particular subnet right so you're basically sending all the traffic through through the DRG here now the DRG is a little bit different than the other gateways we have looked until now uh, DRG is a standalone object you must attach it to a VCN uh, after you create the DRG and VCN and DRG have a one-to-one -one relationship meaning a single VCN can only have one DRG and one DRG can be attached to a single VCN uh, at a time so just let's quickly summarize all the network connectivity options we, we saw in, in this module so the first one is around uh, letting instances connect to the internet and receive connections from it right by directional going to internet so you would use internet gateway if you want instances to reach the internet uh, and of course get those packets back for things like updates uh, but not have inbound connections initiated from the internet uh, you have NAT gateway um, and the net network address basically is doing the network address translation uh, if you want the VCN uh, uh, your uh, your host in the VCN to privately connect to OCI public services for example object storage but you are bypassing the internet traffic is all going through Oracle's network uh, backbone uh, you would use service gateway and then finally if you want your host your your VCN to connect to your on-prem environment uh, uh, again for private traffic you could use um, something like a dynamic routing gateway so these are the four gateways 
with different distinct design patterns. In the next module, we'll look at a couple of these uh, demos where we create an internet gateway, we create a NAT gateway, uh, and then subsequently, we'll also talk about peering and transit routing, which completes uh, the set of all the network connectivity options available with uh, OCI uh, virtual network uh, service. Thanks for um, watching this lecture. If you have time, uh, please join the ne next lecture where we do a couple of demos on these gateways. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, demo on running a web server 